Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how you can take some cached particles and how we can retime those so we can slow down the playback, speed up the playback. We can even create some speed ramps so they'll start off full speed, then we'll have a portion of slow motion and then go back up to full speed. All of this and we're going to get perfectly smooth particle playback. So let's start that clock and we'll jump in. In our scene, we have this uh, particle splash set up, and we want to do a slow motion effect when it splashes up here. And we can do that in the cache object. Let's go to our XP cache playback tab, and here is where we can control the speed of the playback of this. Now, this will only work by retiming particle caches. You won't get smooth playback if you try and retime open VDB mesh caches or trail caches. It won't work, but it works brilliantly for particles. So what we're going to do, first of all, is uh, click on hold, and that means that if we run out of cached um, frames, it won't then try and simulate in real time the next frame. It'll just hold the last available cached frames. That's quite an important uh, setting to check. First of all, we can have a look at our scale. If we put this on 200%, it'll play back this cache at double speed. So we've got a really fast playback. If we put it on 50% scale, it'll play it back and this will now be half speed. And it's half speed, but we're going to get really nice, smooth particle playback. Look at that smooth slow motion. You don't get that kind of jittering of trying to slow down video footage, for example, if you don't have the data. This interpolates correctly and we get this super slow, smooth slow motion. We can go even slower. Let's go really slow to say 5% playback. Now, this is so slow that actually we need to offset the cache a bit because look, we're never getting to the to the splash. So I know the splash happens at about frame 25 in real time. So I can offset the playback of the cache by 25 frames. Yep, so there we have got the section we want. And if we hit play, look how smooth that super slow motion is. Absolutely perfect. Great. Now, the only issue is we can't animate this. We can't start with it on 100 and then animate down to 5%. It doesn't work like that. We need to do a different technique. But if you want to just render off a scene at one slow speed, uh, this scale is a really quick and easy way of setting that up. So let's have a look at the other option because we want to do an animated speed ramp. We'll just reset these values and we're going to explore. There's a couple of different options. I'm just going to show you one of these options, which I think is the easiest to set up and the most versatile. We're going to go to our retiming options and we're going to pick time in seconds. Now, what we need to do is give it a keyframe at the beginning and the end of our timeline. So let's go to the first frame, which is frame zero and add a keyframe of zero seconds. And then let's go to the last frame, which is frame 100 in my timeline. And I need to work out what 100 frames in seconds is. And I can do that just in here. The maths can be done in here. So we type in 100 frames, and then we need to divide it by whatever your project frames per second is. Mine's 30 frames per second. So 100 divided by 30 equals whatever the uh, time is in seconds, 3.333. So I'm going to add a keyframe there. So now that we've done that, we can have a look at this track in our um, timeline here by clicking this button. And if we look at our cache object, open it up, here is our time track that we've just created. And if I hit H on the keyboard, it frames the keys uh, in the view. But we want to look at the curve. So let's go to the F curve mode by clicking this button here. And here is our curve. And by default, it, it gives us a Bezier curve with these handles. And that means that this isn't playing back at 100% speed consistently. It's easing in. So it starts off slow, eases into full speed, and then there's an ease out where it then comes to a stop. We don't actually want that. We want this to be linear. So to do that, with these keyframes selected, we just hit this linear button here. Now we've got linear playback. So this is now playing back as if it was just playing at 100%. But what we want to do is slow it when we get to this splash. So here's what we do. We get to the point where you want the slow motion and where the playhead intersects our curve. Hold control, click to make a keyframe. Then we're going to move forward to say frame 50 
add another keyframe. Now, what's important here is we want to adjust the rate of playback between these two keyframes, but we want this bit to maintain its 100% full speed status and this. So to do that, we need to ensure that this angle remains unchanged. So here's how we do that. With this keyframe selected, we hold control and select this keyframe. So now we have two selected and we move both of them down. And that means by doing that, we have maintained this full speed angle, but we've slowed down this section. So if we look at that, let's have a look, full speed, slow motion, full speed. If you want more slow motion, you can drag it to the right, but we are, let's just hit Control A to select all keyframes and then H to frame all. But by moving it right, and let's just select those two again. By moving it right, we have still we maintained this angle because we had both of those keyframes selected. Okay, so now we've got more slow motion. Let's hit play, see what we've got. Splash, super slow-mo, back into real time. Fantastic. So you can add, if you like, Bezier curves um, to these different keyframes. So you get more of an ease in if you want that slowing down. But you just need to be mindful and careful that you don't mess around too much with these angles of playback because you want it to be a consistent speed. Um, so that's just a, just a warning. Um, but it's really cool, such a versatile look, perfectly su smooth, super slow-mo. You can even have it, if we bring these and bring it down, this will start actually moving backwards in time and then forwards again. So loads of uh, versatility to this, loads of artistic control, and you can put as many different speed ramps in this one scene as you want. Uh, but the main thing is that you get this brilliant, perfectly interpolated, super smooth, super slow-mo effects by retiming our cache object.